So welcome back to Rue's Life and I've really enjoyed looking back on 2022. January and you can see there's some frost on the ground. We're just looking at the squash frame. You can see some of the squash still on the ground. The plants, um, I chopped and dropped them. The frame has seen better days and actually big chunks of it started to fall down. So I will be starting again this year. Here you can see um, the onions in um, the beginning of 2022 and some brassicas there in the background, some sprouts. This is the soft fruit bed, um, not really doing very much as you would expect at that time of the year. But again, you can see that heavy frost in the beds and also in the bark paths surrounding it. So that's my um, strawberries and the uh, raspberry canes there. Um, you can just see the emergence of the rhubarb there in my little rhubarb bed. In the polytunnel, not a huge amount going on. Um, the far door there is battened and you can see the uh, draft excluder underneath and there's some few onions there. This was really exciting. This is me creating my um, flower bed. So I laid lots of cardboard down. This is well rotted horse manure from my mucky, from my horses. And I'm just spreading it out there. It was quite a big job, but I did get it all done in a morning. Um, it's just great to be able to create a whole new bed with the no dig method, which is how I create all my beds. Um, so you can see the cardboard there. And I'm just heading off several trips to the muck heap um, at the other end, at, uh, at the top of the drive. The last couple of loads were actually out of a stable that had been deep littered, and that's why it looks drier. Um, but yeah, in a morning, I created a whole new bed. February in the polytunnel still not a lot going on it's become a bit of a dumping ground it's a great place to put all my plastic pots and things that are perishable there you can see the rhubarb starting to emerge in the little rhubarb plot and then again the soft fruit bed um, it started to warm up now not a huge amount going on and that's the rest of the plot there. I've started topping up the pathways with some of the bark I already had, and there's more to come on that later. And you can just see the onions, uh, some Brussels sprouts, and some of the bits and pieces, but not a huge amount going on, as you would expect, really, at this time of the year. Um, that's the chives uh, there. Those are the onions that were starting to look really good, and I had a fantastic onion harvest in 2022. Nothing really in that bed now. That was the brassica bed, which has been weeded out. Um, apart from the spring, Sprouts, one's toppled over there, but they were the best sprouts I've ever grown. And we had such delicious, delicious harvests from them. Again, into the squash bed there, you can just see um, the old squash plants just on the ground and some weeds coming through um, and that frame which has now been dismantled because it just fell to pieces. But it did two seasons and it's definitely for me the way to grow uh, squash. These are this is actually a lay by just up the road where we saw the council blowing a load of um, wood chip. So we asked them and they said I could have it. And we started really topping up these beds with free wood chip um, and there I am super excited. Um, that's um, one of the builders bags that we filled. March. Um, those are my sweet pea plants looking really, really healthy. And I had some beautiful sweet peas um, in 2022. And this was the beginning of my wildflower meadow. So those are all wildflower seeds that I sowed um, into these cells. Brassicas. I went a bit crazy with the brassicas. And if all, in all honesty, I grew a few too many. Um, but I did, did give a lot of those plants away. Um, and I was a bit disappointed because I'd had such a successful year the year before. Um, not such a good year in 2022. Uh, you just saw some onions there um, in a bed in the polytunnel. And here is one of my geraniums just starting to come back um, in the spring or early beginnings of spring. A uh, few bits and pieces in that bed there. The rhubarb starting to sprout. You know, you really know spring's on its way when things start to sprout through like that. Um, starting to weed this bed out now. And you can see the raspberry canes that are actually starting to um, sprout. We've got little bits and bobs going on those there. Look there, you can just see the tops, the little shoots coming through. They were a little disappointing. I'm hoping for better things this year. Strawberry bed just needs a blinking good weed. It was starting to get a bit overgrown, but I soon got on top of that. 
chives are starting to come now after having looked like they were dead all winter that but they're sitting under the soil aren't they waiting to come nothing in that bed it's been weeded um, and nothing really going on in there um, you can already see the california poppy starting to come through the self-seeded ones in amongst my onions there in that middle bed um, and there's just some celery at the far end there and then the far bed um was what i put my brassicas in back now to the squash bed just needs weeding not really a lot going on there at this stage and i actually put uh, more um bark down around the plot this year so i'm just laying down the weed suppressant membrane there it's a bit of a funny old shape that that edge and then using those bark chips to create uh, pathways spreading it out by hand and there i am looking very pleased with myself with a cup of coffee after a job well done april this is the flower bed that i started back in january and um, i've got a few bits and bobs going in there not a huge amount going on but just the very beginnings of flowers the squash frame i have put some attention into that now and started preparing it ready for the squash and you can see i've put some strings across it for those squash to climb up brassica bed now we've got the netting over uh, i've got some spear traps already in to get rid of those pesky slugs i also use nematodes and you can see there that i've got some of those um, brassicas out And there's the onions looking really, really good there in that middle bed. Uh, an empty bed there, but again, the chives starting to really look good. And you can see those pathways are looking so much better. Here you can see the raspberry canes are really starting to come now. Um, I've got a lot of foliage on them, but I only got a handful of raspberries. And the uh, rhubarb there looking great. Look at these wild flowers. They were absolutely amazing. I left them a little bit long, if I'm honest, before I got them into the ground for various reasons. Um, but I'm hoping it's going to be better this year. It was good, but I think I can do better. And then this is the exciting time, isn't it? Where you've got all sorts of germination and lots of little seedlings starting to come. There's some carrots there in that bed. And I think they were turnip there behind them. I also added to my growing space by adding these two um, hanging shelves just with some old bread crates. Some onions you can see there in the background and these are all my flowers that I started to sow from seed. May, the hanging baskets are up and um, I've got some geraniums there and these are the geraniums that I overwintered in the polytunnel. The flower bed starting to come now. Uh, I've got some lavender in there, the rudbeckia that I'd had in a pot and I've actually put there into the right hand corner you can see. I did pop some alliums in, they didn't do particularly well. Onions looking absolutely great, had a fantastic harvest. Pathways looking good. And yeah, you can see some Californian poppies there. I did actually weed those out in that uh, bed nearest to the polytunnel. Um, they're just everywhere, but they're so pretty. And the chives are already starting to flower. Here we sail past the onions. I say just brilliant. We had about 200 um, onions this year. Uh, brassicas still looking good. Um, I say they weren't the best this year, but we did have some cauliflower and some cabbage, some purple sprouting broccoli. The kale wasn't brilliant this year. The sprouts were good but not as good as the year before. There you can see the strawberry plants are really starting to mature now. And oh my goodness, they were wonderful. I had the best strawberries I've ever had. They were just prolific. And I think part of the reason was later in the season, I actually covered them to keep the pigeons off. The rhubarb's really coming on now again. We had fabulous rhubarb. I grew this from seed a good few years back now, and I've just had nothing but wonderful harvests from that. 
here you can see the wildflowers now uh, they had gone past the point at which i should have got them out but they're still really healthy um but some of them had started to flower um so they really should have gone into the ground by now lots going on on the staging there and you can see i'm in a t-shirt now that you know the, the the good weather's really on its way um i've got the lots of other little brassicas in pots i did give a lot of way i overdid it a bit with the brassicas this year there you can see some of my beans looking really really healthy those are the runner beans and i put bean arches in the polytunnel this year and it was a huge success so i've left them in situ and i will be doing the same again this year with the beans so lots of bits and bobs on the staging there loads of seedlings it's that exciting time isn't it when you're itching to get them all into the ground lots of um those seedlings are were flowers for the flower bed and oh my goodness it was so successful so I think all of those trays contained various uh, flowers that I grew from seed, from yeah, lupins, all, all sorts. I'm not quite sure what's in that pot at the moment. Leek seedlings possibly or onions. I think there's some little chilli seedlings there, um, possibly some cucumbers in the back there and uh, squash and other bits and bobs. The chilies um, germinated well and grew reasonably well, but I didn't have the most productive um chili plants in the end um, and not hugely successful with chilies um, but i'll keep trying and i always get a few more brassicas there as i say i just went a bit brassica crazy this year um so i will definitely ease off <laughs> uh, this season more brassicas um, yeah i just went a bit crazy i think i was so excited that i had had um, I'd given up on brassicas because um, I'd had so many failures and then I decided to have another go in 2021 and it was so successful um, that I went a bit crazy. Uh, I think some of those are actually uh, sunflowers and possibly some bean plants there in the background as well. Um, uh, and I just moved a lot of my plant pots into the beds that were dormant at this time just because I was running out of space. And you can also see a few of the peas there in the background. Uh, these were carrots that were OK. They weren't the best carrots I've ever had, but they were OK. Um, you know, you win some, you lose some. And some years they're amazing and some years they're not so good. And this year they weren't as good as in previous years. And you can just see some chard in the background there as well underneath that hanging shelf. And there again, more brassicas um, and some of the various bits and bobs. Those hanging shelves were great, though. They really did free up some space. And I actually moved them later in the season uh, and used them for drying onions. There you can see some chard um, in its early stages. It started to bolt a little bit, but I chopped it back and um, it did really, really well. This is me starting the wildflower meadow, finally getting those um, plants into the ground. I used a bulb planter, um, a little bit of compost in each hole and then popped a plant in. Um, so you can see me here with the bulb planter. So essentially I just went around with the plant, bulb planter making loads and loads and loads of holes. And when I got bored of doing that, I put the plants in. And when I got bored of doing that, I went back to making holes and I just kept on going until I'd filled the full area. It was quite a task, but it was worth it. June and things are really starting to flower now. So those geraniums, the one on the left looks great. The one on the right was a bit slower to come. And also the ones in the little window box. Um, I love to have geraniums around the place. They're so cheerful um, and they just looked great. There you can see the wildflower meadow now starting to come. Um, as I say, it wasn't as good as I'd hoped. Um, I'm hoping for better things this year, um, but they did start to flower and it was ever so pretty. Um, and it's really great for attracting those pollinators. The flower bed now starting to come, a few bits and bobs in there, um, lots more to come, but most of them were still seedlings in the um, polytunnel at this stage. There's the squash frame again, just patiently waiting for the squash, which are still in the polytunnel at the moment. Brassicas looking good. Um, part of the reason I didn't have success with them this year as well as other years is that they did grow a little bit big a little bit quick and you'll see that later on onions looking fabulous um, with the Californian poppies coming through them as well 
and there was some celery there at the end. Look at these onions. So I think this was pretty much just before I harvested them, but there were some beautiful big fat onions there. These are the squash and the pumpkin plants really looking good. And I don't think it was long after this that I started getting them in the ground and they really yomped away. So that's possibly a cucumber, maybe a squash. I think that's a cucumber. Uh, you can just see some chilli peppers there at the front. They were looking pretty healthy, but as I say, um, I potted them into bigger pots and they just didn't do particularly well. These are the selection of different flowers that I grew. I can't remember off the top of my head now what they all were, um, but they just looked fantastic. Um, and to start them from seeds and then put them into that bed, I was absolutely thrilled tomato seedling or plants really now as they are um, starting to look good before I put them into their final place. Uh, these beans they really don't look much at the moment um, but the um, climbers really climbed and yomped away and those dwarf um, variety rondo behind the climbers were just fantastic. You can just see the peas there we just skipped over those on the left. I think we've all established peas are not my favourite uh, vegetable to grow. I'm going to have another bash this year but beans, beans, beans all the way for me um, they were just fantastic so I put the bean arches in this year that was new in the polytunnel two arches straddling over the um, two beds and oh my goodness they were fantastic and you'll see that again keep watching and you'll see how amazingly they did these carrots uh, in the background, um, they were OK. They weren't my best harvest. I've had better harvests. Um, I did successionally sow them. Um, I did think I'd had some kind of infestation of something or other, but I couldn't find any evidence. And I think actually they had been chewed by mice that we did get some. Um, that was Chris and I together. We assembled. I bought three compost bays online. Um, they've turned out to be absolutely brilliant. They weren't the cheapest, but they weren't the most expensive, kind of middle of the range. Um, and I've got three of those, um, easy to put together. We did it between the two of us, but I think I could have done it on my own. It was just easier as Chris was home to do it together. And I've now got those laid out on some weed suppressant membrane and I'm filling them up fast. Um, so I can actually recommend them. I think there's a video somewhere if you have a look in my playlists of me putting those together. And I did leave a link in the description. Uh, July. So I haven't got a huge amount of footage for July for some reason. I, I know it's there somewhere, but I had a bit of trouble trouble tracking it down but you can see here across at the house in the flower bed on the woodshed the calendula looks amazing and the sweet peas were really starting to come and they just got better and better and also there's one of the geraniums in the hanging baskets I love to have those on the woodshed and um, on three of the four corners I always have hanging baskets with geraniums in August and now look at those squash and pumpkin they're in and they're romping away and um, they were just phenomenal and keep watching and you will see what an incredible harvest I had and in fact they've cured so well they're stored in the spare room and we're still eating them here we are looking at the brassicas uh, those are the sprouts um, you can see that they went a little bit big a little bit quick and I think that's why we had a few problems because they were touching the sides of the netting and of course the cabbage white managed to lay eggs um, I also had a bit of a white fly problem uh, that last year as well but we had lots of good brassicas we had cabbage and um, we had about six or seven good cauliflowers um, I lost a couple because I left them too long and they bolted but we did have some good brassicas just not quite as good as I'd had the year before here you can see these beautiful Californian poppies which I leave in the ground after I've harvested the onions um, and they work as a little bit of a, a, a living mulch um, because while they're growing and looking delightful the weeds don't get the opportunity to establish the netting is there just to keep the pigeons at bay we have a big pigeon problem um, and I tend to just leave as much netting as I can over my beds and here we've got uh, various bits and pieces. I think there were some turnips in there and some beetroot. 
Here we're now looking at the soft fruit. Those were the autumn fruiting raspberries. And I have to be honest, they weren't great. Um, so I'm hoping for better things this year. We only had a handful of raspberries, uh, which was a bit disappointing. Again, covered to keep the um, pigeons off. The strawberries, on the other hand, oh my goodness, you can see they're starting to flower there. Um, and I've never had so many strawberries. They were just prolific. They kept coming and coming. I kept picking and picking. You can see them there. Look at that. And there were hundreds of them. Uh, you can just see the rhubarb there um, starting to go over and past its best. But again, we had fabulous harvests from the rhubarb. Uh, this is rhubarb, I think, uh, Victoria, um, which I grew from seed a few years ago. And there, look at those hanging baskets on the shed. Just delightful. Uh, they were kind of trailing geraniums that I did buy, um, although I do manage to overwinter as many as I can. And the polyton, look at those beans. Oh, my goodness. The bean arches were just fantastic. Um, there's some lettuce in this bed here. Uh, parsnips on the right looking great and some lettuce there on the left. Uh, some for us and lots for the chickens. The beans really yomped away. Uh, these are the Greek gigantes. It was my first year of growing them. I will definitely be growing them again. They are delicious and I would highly recommend them. Uh, that's some basil, I think, in that hanging baskets. Had lots of herbs going in hanging baskets. Uh, this is my second lot of peas. Um, I had some peas. They were OK. They weren't brilliant. But beans, beans, beans. Absolutely wonderful. You can see those dwarf bean rondo in the background there. We're just moving around to those. Um, they were brilliant. These are the uh, dwarf bean. I just kept picking them and picking them and picking them. They were delicious. Uh, raw in salads, steamed, cooked, and I've also still got a freezer full. Watermelons. I grew melons in my polytunnel. Um, first year I ever have have done that and it was so exciting. Um, and again, keep watching and you will see um, I actually had, I think I had about five melons all in all uh, and they were delicious. Cucumbers, brilliant season for cucumbers. Um, you can already see, look at all those flowers and there's some little baby cucumbers on that plant. Um, and they were just delicious and they just kept on coming. Courgettes. Um, I grew some different varieties this year, some of the round varieties and various different colours, um, as well as some of the traditional um, ones. They were OK. Uh, they weren't the best. And I have to say, uh, or as prolific as normal. Um, I wasn't I didn't get gluts and I wasn't sick of, of courgette by the end of the season. So hopefully a better season this year. Chili plants looked healthy, didn't come to a huge amount. I had a small harvest, um, but, you know, chilies are chilies. And then the tomatoes. I didn't grow a huge amount this year. I just grew enough for myself um, to eat because Chris doesn't like them. The onion harvest, the big onion harvest of 2022. Look at that big fat onion. Um, so I cure them in the polytunnel and then I do actually chop and freeze the bulk of them. And I had around about 200 onions um, in 2022. Um, so that's a year's supply for us. Just as we're running out of onions, we should have the next harvest coming in. And they were just great. A nice selection, predominantly white, but also some red. Um, here's me harvesting these beans. I keep going nuts about these are those dwarf variety rondo. Um, oh, just can't rate them highly enough. September. This is me harvesting my one of my sugar baby watermelons. I can't remember now how much it weighed, but you can see um, from the hand waving how incredibly excited I was. Um, and I decided to do a little taste test. It wasn't the best watermelon in the world, but it was a watermelon and I grew it. Um, and I say I had a few and they were really, really delicious. Um, I think um, they weren't as ripe as they could have been. When I cut it open, look, you'll see there's more green than red inside. So I'm going to have another bash this year and I'm hoping for better things. But it was a watermelon and I ate it and it was lush. Um, October, I've taken a load of the runners from my strawberries and made them into plants, which will be for this year, 2023. Um, I'm starting to think about pulling those old compost heaps down now. And there you can see the three new ones in situ. Um, and there's just some netting slung over that. That's actually from the um, brassica bed, um, which is now dried and put away. The um, raspberry canes, again, looking good, but didn't really fruit much. 
now we're into the brassica bed you can see they are the blown um cauliflower um but um i've put some onions now into this end of the bed and there's still a few bits and bobs bit of purple sprouting broccoli there um a few last pickings of that again not my best year but uh, we had some and it was nice um, and here at the sprouts so sprouts again we did have some they were nice but they weren't as good as the year before so let's see what 2023 brings but uh, those were little teeny tiny ones but we did have some decent sized ones um, and we did have them for our festive meal and they were lovely you can just see a bit of the um, kale there which never really came to anything and I've actually I ended up digging it up and throwing it because um, it actually had quite a lot of white fly damage uh, there you can see that bed's just looking a bit of a tangly mess and really could do with a good weed just grass and all sorts coming through after the onions but not as much as if I hadn't left those Californian poppies in the chives were fantastic starting to get a few spaces now um, that's the Chiogia beetroot which has been absolutely phenomenal and there's still some of the bolt hardy there in the background by now I've got my onions in I grow them from sets um, white in the bulk of the bed and a few red the tail end and also some in the brassica bed and despite it coming to the end of the year I've still got flowers in that flower bed I've now brought the hanging baskets into the polytunnel ahead of the cold snap and the frosts and there's still a few bits and bobs going on in the polytunnel some salads some lemon balm bits and pieces the tomatoes are pretty much finished now and I actually didn't get them in in time but they just plopped down onto the floor but they are now cleared. There's some mizuna and some other salad there. Uh, these are the chilies, which as I say weren't brilliant. A couple of empty pots. Those are the uh, Greek gigantes which I've actually cut back and I'm hoping will come again and those were my parsnip plants. This is me harvesting my squash and pumpkin what a fabulous year i had you can see there's some butternut kiki kiri crown prince um some big old jack-o-lanterns all sorts of varieties they were phenomenal november things are starting to die back in the flower bed now everything's starting to come to an end i think there was some leaks there in that pot uh, but yeah everything's starting to look a little bit tired and a little bit sad apart from the onions which are looking really healthy so again i overwinter my onions uh, and you saw the results of the harvest of those um here we've got um some the a uh, few leek seedlings there uh, a little bit very early or very late whichever way you want to look at it and still lots of beetroot there and i've started to um mulch these beds down with you can see the cardboard there and underneath that cardboard are lots of the autumn leaves that i'd gathered in So starting to, as I say, mulch those beds in preparation for the real cold weather that was to come. And the chives starting to die back now. I've chopped down the uh, raspberry canes now and they've eventually been chopped and popped into the compost heaps. Started to pull the netting back. Um, I haven't done a huge amount with the strawberries yet. Um, I'll be doing more with those in the spring. I need to pull a few of the older plants out and get those little uh baby plants that I've grown on in still a few brassicas there a little bit of purple sprouting broccoli not a huge amount but a few pickings still to come these plants did go a little bit big a little bit quick and I didn't get as much off them and there you can see some of the sprouts again not my best sprouts ever but sprouts they were and we had some for our festive dinner polytunnel not a huge amount going on but still bits and pieces um hanging baskets are in but not covered yet i do cover them over at the tail end of the year with fleece the chard still looking good and getting plenty of pickings from that and some baby chard as well and that is just some nasturtium that i kept going for as long as i could to use the leaves to actually feed our tortoise victor um, but that's now died back december and look how cold it went so real heavy frosts now and you can see i've started to really mulch those beds over with cardboard and compost used chicken bedding leaves that i've gathered anything i could get my hands on to cover those beds over covered over that uh 
polytunnel door uh, before that cold weather really came in to stop the frosts and the real icy cold weather getting into the polytunnel. It just helps. You can also see that hanging basket there, um, as with all the others, and my frost sensitive plants are covered with some fleece. So that's the end of 2022 and I had a really successful year but I'm super excited to start the year ahead and thank you so much for staying with me on this journey.